Hey, welcome to La Paz. I'm here for a little update from our Nora 2023 hurricane. As you can see behind me, we've got a little bit of damage here in the marina in the Bay of La Paz. So I just want to show you a little bit of the damage here and talk to you a little bit about hurricanes here in the Southern Baja and what you can expect and experience after over 20 years of being in hurricanes. I've got a little experience in this subject, so let me give you a little quick hurricane tour. On October 20th, 2023, here in the Southern Baja, we were hit by Hurricane Norma. It was a class three hurricane approximately as it touched the ground through Todos Santos and it made its way slowly across the Baja into the Sea of Cortez and to the mainland of Mexico. I guess it was a surprise storm for many of us this late in the season, uh, almost November. That's not a common time for storms here and caught some of us off guard. But I guess I just wanted to share a little bit about the cleanup, a little bit about how to prepare for hurricanes and what not to do in a hurricane to try to help people out a little better understanding of storms here in the Southern Baja in the Pacific side of Mexico. Okay, just starting with hurricane preparation. There's a lot of great websites with information and tracking that's very accurate on storms. Always great to be up on that, get automated alerts, and keep an eye on where the storms are going, the size of them, the width of them, and how close they're gonna to be to your region. You can kind of judge what sort of preparation you need to take just based on these websites alone. I think always taking down sail shades, loose structures, anything that can fly around in your yard and smash your windows. Always be very careful of that and make sure that everything's put away and strapped down. If you're not here, make sure that you hire somebody to come in and prepare your house for a hurricane. Obviously, when you take that much rain from a hurricane, there's gonna be some leakage. It's always great to make sure somebody checks your house afterwards. Make sure you have electricity, make sure no windows are broken, mop up any water that's come in through your windows. People will use sandbags to stop water from flooding in their house. And for preparation of the house, either put window protection on your windows for hurricane film that stops anything from breaking the window, or many people in Cabo San Lucas and Los Cabos region will put hurricane shades on their windows to cover their windows. That's also very helpful. Also very helpful to make sure you have good anchors in the concrete that hold those shutters because a good strong storm can pull those shutters off your house. So it's a few days before the storm. You have your house prepared for the storm. You can see that it's coming your way. I would stock up on your basic supplies, keeping in mind that you may not have electricity after this storm for a few days. So make sure something you can cook and eat without electricity and prepare with water, gasoline for your car, things like this. If it was a really severe storm like Odile, uh, you know, you would want to have gas for a week. It's always really nice to have a generator as well too for backup electricity. Uh, you can be several days without electricity here after a storm and I think having a little Honda generator, 1000 watt, 2000 watt, will make your life much nicer after a storm. It'll power your television, power your referee, it'll power your internet and it'll just make everything a little bit more comfortable for the two to three to seven days you may be without power. Here in the Southern Baja it's very important to realize the difference with hurricanes compared to say Florida or Texas or that type of region. Here our flooding takes place in the mountains and through the arroyos which are basically dry riverbeds and they don't soak up any water and when a lot of rain hits it floods and you have a meter six feet of water coming down these these dry riverbeds and that's the dangerous flooding of our storms but it doesn't actually saturate the coastline or into the homes or damage like this that you would see in these other regions of North America. The tide surge is minimal and while we do have get big waves in Los Cabos, it's not really entering into the coastal regions where there's homes. So it is a different type of tide surge and we don't experience the same flooding issues like you would in Florida or Texas. Also our homes here in Southern Baja are all cement homes, cement roofs. 
they're very strong in a hurricane. Maybe the windows would be the weak point and flying debris around your yard would be the two causes of any damage normally to your house. A little bit of water leaking in them, but these cement structures stand up really well to hurricanes. So make sure you stay away from the flash flood regions and don't go out during the storms or afterwards for at least probably 24 hours to let the water flow out of the mountains and through the flash flood zones. The very dangerous, that's where people lose their lives here, and so you have to be careful about those. Also, if you're a little of a bored person on a sailboat, that's also where many of our friends lose their lives, trying to take care of their boats during a storm. You need to take those boats into a sheltered marina with a, with a breakwater. Out on the Bay of La Paz or out on the open ocean is just no place for a boat in a hurricane, and most of them normally sink or end up on the beach. Uh, case in point, La Paz's hurricane just now. This is not the first time this has happened. Uh, also, Hurricane Marty in 2003, uh, the marinas broke up and a lot of boats sunk because the waves in the marina, in the actual Bay of La Paz, were huge. So yeah, live aboard boaters, get your boats into the, the protected marinas before a storm. And if you're not here, chances are your boat may be lost. So be very careful about that. But don't stay on your boat during a storm. It's just not worth it. I know everybody wants to, but that's where people are losing their lives most often in these storms. Okay, here we are in La Paz, aftermath of the storm, down on the Malacom, just checking out some of the boats and the cleanup taking place. This is pretty common, but maybe not so common to have this many boats on the beach, but the cleanup on the Malacom and the cleanup after a storm, it's pretty common to see things cleaned up and back to normal after two or three days. This is what's taking place here now in La Paz and throughout the Southern Baja, and things will be back to normal by the end of the week. Okay, and that's a little tour of some of the damage this year from Nora 2023. I just want to give people a little bit of uh, advice on hurricanes. You know, everybody gets very nervous about them here. Normally they're pretty safe. You stay at home, don't travel, stay out of the arroyos, and the liveaboard boaters, get them in a protected marina. That's your two most dangerous spots in a hurricane. On the water is a liveaboard, and also on land, driving and through arroyas that are flooded. Both, that's where everybody would die in a hurricane here. It's just not like Florida. We don't have a huge, massive storm surge that's flooding vast areas. Really not that dangerous, but a lot of damage can be created by a hurricane here, and this is some examples of the marine damage that happened in this hurricane. Thank you for joining me and taking a look here in La Paz. We'll be cleaned up in another day. Back to normal, back to business. Thank you very much. Hasta luego. Saludos.